Hi, so this is Tatonga Gibson. Um, I'm a citizen from the Holowasaponi, uh, from Hollis of North Carolina. Um, what I'm here today, what I'm here to do today, excuse me, is actually talk to you guys about um, wampum and wampum belts, wampum belt making, the history behind it all, um, why we should still have them, why we should still be giving them, passing them along, so on and so forth, making them, everything like that. But also going to be showing you how to do it um, and kind of the materials and tools that you'll need to, to do it and step-by-step -step instructions as well. So let's get into it. As Halawas, being both Nansman and Saponi, it's very important for us to remember that wampum belts were a part of our lives. Um, for the longest time, all the way up until probably 200 years ago, they it really stopped, I'd say, um, altogether. Uh, there, I know there's still tre treaties and wampum belts being shared back and forth between different communities um, and even between the communities and the colonial government. Um, a lot of those belts weren't really described too well, uh, so making remaking those belts has been kind of a trick, um, and most of those belts are lost to time. But wampum belts, even nowadays, can still be made, um, and when I say continuously being made, us as Native people, we are a living, breathing thing. We are a living, breathing entity, and our tribes are living and breathing entities. Um, and so with that, our tribes have to reach out to each other and, and build relations with each other. And we would use these wampum belts to help uh, seal the, uh, those relations. Uh, so making wampum belts like this one. And tribes would be passing these along. Most times you find messengers being sent uh, with wampum belts about this size or even smaller as far as the length of it um, just to present a a treaty or a peace if you will so a lot of times you also find them being carried in their waist um, uh, like tucked in their belt and carried along their waist and they might have multiple belts carried on them depending on what they're there for um, but all these belts tell stories all these belts um, represents different things <clears throat> um, specifically these belts represent different things for me whether it be um, different different gods if you will the different Manitouak um, and, and Algonquin um, Mampai, uh, Mampapua yes Mampapua I do believe um, and Saponi uh, but this here is the fire bird that actually went into Lake Drummond and created what they call Lake Drummond today and, and the original Firebird's Nest. So that's what all this is here. Um, and these are the four Nansman um, villages um, that weren't far off from that. <clears throat> but uh, like I said, different belts mean different things. So this one here is actually a special one as well because it represents, well, in my mind, Hollister. It's more or less telling the story of how Nansman and Tudelo or Saponi people came to be together. Um, so from here, I have the three arrows for Saponi people, and we're represented by those three arrows facing downwards. And there's, and there we are right there. And then this is all turmoil and things like that, strife that we go through, um, and the things that we've been through to get into Hollister. And on the other side, it's Nansman people, the fish. You know, Nansman means people of the fishing point. The Nansman there, right? Yeah. All the stuff that we've been through to, to get, once again, to Hollister and to meet in the middle. And it become one and become what we know now as as But different belts would be made like this. Uh, Nansman and Saponi people had different belts between multiple different tribes. Uh, Saponi and Nansman had workings with Iroquois people um, and in some cases, and especially in the case of our community, um, Suwan and Algonquin people coming together to form those bonds as well. Um, Nansman people had bonds with not only the Maharan but also the Nodaway people um, along with of course the extensive Algonquin network that runs through Virginia and into North Carolina back in the day. 
as far as the pony people, they had belts with the uh, Tuscarora. There were belts with other Suans from further south, including the Catawba. Um, and then, of course, with Algonquin people, especially after um, Fort Cristana. Uh, so with that fort, there was three different types of, of speakers, three different language speakers, and they were all forced into the same spot. They were Nansman, uh, they were Maharan and Nottaway there too, uh, but there were also Tutelo, Saponi, Okanichi, Monacan, Eno, um, Stuckenup, um, a few other tribes as well. Um, they were all just kind of mashed in together. And then once the um, fort disbanded, these tribes went had to go somewhere. Uh, so you see the formation of the communities that we now have in North Carolina and, and parts of Southern Virginia. But we'll actually get into making these wampum belts and the uses for them. Like I said, wampum belts can be made like this to tell huge giant stories, things like that, whether it be for peace. Um, if you paint a wampum belt, if you have like a peace wampum belt with somebody and you were to paint that red, then that means that you're going to war against them. And until you clean that off and completely clear that, then that means that there will not be peace between you. So if I were to paint this completely red, or if I were to have this between me and somebody else, and I were to paint this completely red, that means that I declare war upon them, and that me and them are not in good favor with each other. Um, but different belts can, uh, wampum, as far as wampum belts, can be used for many different things, including just making um, Gastoa wraps, if you will, or the Gastoa crown, I call it. Uh, so this actually will go around the Gastoa, and Saponi is actually off a tow bulk, so yeah, um, a hat, yeah, if you will. Uh, so things like this, so you can make fancy little, well, not too fancy, but fancy enough, I guess, really, um, fancy little pieces to go on it fit around it um, you can use it to make cuffs you can use it to make armbands knee bands so on and so forth so now that I'm done rambling about that we can get into some of the tools that you need materials um, and things that you will probably need to make in order to do this so a few things you'll need <clears throat> first you got to get leather lace um, where I actually got this from is wandering bull um, dot com and it's run by a native guy and he is a great friend um, and he's got lots of good stuff and so my wampum beads and my leather lacing and a, a lot of my other crafting supplies that I have around the house come from him because it's at a decent price um, and it's from where I live now it's local um, but he's up here in the northeast I think he lives in Vermont, so he's just right above me, um, Vermont, New Hampshire. So he's just right above me. I live in Massachusetts at the moment. Um, but <clears throat> some other things you're going to need besides the leather lacing is these. So this isn't actually wampum wampum. Wampum comes from the quahog shell, uh, or what wampanoag people call puckwahog. Um, and the, the word in Algonquin down there is not too far off, if I'm not mistaken. I can't remember it right off, right off the top of my head. Um, but this here is is glass. Um, I've used clay. I've used glass. I prefer glass because it actually stands up a lot better. Um, I'm pretty hard on a lot of my stuff, especially when I'm dancing. Um, so I use glass because it stands up to the heat. Um, it stands up to the wear and tear of me dancing with it. Um, it's... It will break if it gets hit, like, pretty hard. Um, but it stands up to pretty much everything, so it's slapping against each other. And when I'm dancing, it doesn't have a problem. Um, and it looks great. So what you're going to have to buy is actually two different colors. Um, they have a few different ones. Um, but normally when doing wampum belt specifically, um, you look to purple and white. So when I go and oh, I'm wandering bull, they have a few different shades of white. It's actually, I think, two, uh, two or three different shades. Uh, but I normally go with the um, the whitest one that they have. They also have like ivory and it's kind of like a peachish. Um, but I go with the whitest that they have and just let it kind of dirty up over time um, because that will 
be what would happen to a normal wampum bead. It would just be dirtied up over time, of course, clean it and everything like that. But it would still be ingrained with some of those things. And I also go with the darkest purple that they have. Uh, there's also lighter purples as well. And I think they also have blue too. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but I go with this here. Um, it's, it's decent. And also when buying it, it comes in two different sizes. So there is the small bag, which is like $2. And then there's also these big bags, which is what I normally get. Big bags like this cost about $20, $26, I do believe it is. And it lasts a good long while. I've made a few different things out of it, um, out of the bags that I have, um, including headbands, belts, um, cuffs, you name it really. Um, so I've made a few things out of it, uh, out of the bags that I had originally bought uh, a few months ago. I'm starting to run a little bit low now, but they'll make it through this. <clears throat> also, something that you're going to need is... Well, two things that you're going to need is, of course, a needle because you have to thread the, the wampum beads in there. Um, but you're also going to need sinew. So what I normally do is it's single thread. It's not the, it's not the triple that um, you can find a lot of times. Um, so this here is actually uh, singled up. And it's thin enough to get through there and to make it back through so I can make the second pass without having too much interference or getting stopped, getting pulled, getting dragged along or anything like that and interfering with the belt being at least looking nice um, and staying correct in the, posi in the correct position. Something else that you're going to need and something else that, I mean, you can probably buy. I haven't seen one specifically for this I, that I can think of, um, but it's a wampum making loom so or a wampum belt loom. So what mine is, I'll show you, is I actually just used a box. I used a rectangle box. And that suffices. So I took the wampum bead and I measured it for each one of these slats that I cut. And I mean, this box was soft enough. I took a a, um, a butter knife to it actually. But I just measured the bead and I put however many I wanted and I put the same number down at the other end. And I cut the lacing so it leaves a little overhang. And then I do the same at that end and I work from one end to the other. Um, normally when I do this, I have a pattern in mind and I just kind of, um, I'm good with numbers. So I have the pattern set in my mind already. I don't have really anything laid out or drawn out. Um, and I just go by that. And then once I get one part of it done, this one here is going to be uh, four circles, um, to represent villages, but also clans for supporting people. Um, and this is going to be my new headband that I'm working on. So once I get the first circle and I get that completely measured how I want it, um, then the next, I mean, the next three is, is gravy. Um, but all in all, this is not going to be too bad. Uh, for one this size, the box is about, it's close to two feet. So, I'm, of course, I'm not going to make a two foot long headband. This, that's not, yeah, this is going to be way too big for my head. Um, but I'm going to make this big enough to go o around my head. Um, so that I can wear it for dancing, powwows, and stuff like that, and for ceremonial purposes as well. Once I feel like this is, is wide enough, uh, as far as the belt is concerned, um, or long enough, if you will, then I will take it off, measure, and then I'll try to finish up. Uh, so I'm going to, like I said, I'm just going to have four, four circles, and it's not going to be too big, but it's going to be big enough. I actually have to put of course you're gonna need scissors as well when you do this so always when you start when I first put it here I, I made I knotted it up and did a few knots and everything like that and you always start going over so this one here I start to go through with that one so I have to finish this line. So you always start going over and you come back underneath. And so I'm coming, once I can thread this here. Sorry, I'm getting blind. We always start over and then you come back over top. But because of how short this is, I'm actually going to add in 
and then I'll cut off what I don't need from this last piece. So I'll add this in, knot it up a few times, and then I'll just continue. So when I'm about making, um, always watch out for your pattern um, and always make sure that you're counting. So with this, of course, I said I was going to be making circles. So I need, I need two purples and then I need four, four whites. But because of how my pattern goes, now it's it, right now these purples are here so next they're going to go here yeah and then they'll go up and yeah keep continue that way so i'll do one white one purple two whites one purple one white And we'll just lay it across. I normally like to space them out like that. Some people just do it as as they lay, and then fix them as they go along. But to each their own. Sometimes make sure everything's tight when you when you're doing it. Pull everything as you go. The thing that. I, I like about this box is normally when I do it and I don't have a computer sitting on the box is I have the box in between my legs and my lap so I can sit just about anywhere and do it so normally I'll sit in front of my TV I mean I'm a, I'm a fan of of different shows so I'll watch different things and do it and after a while it becomes almost a um, a mindless thing well, most people seem to forget, and unless you have been doing, unless you've been doing it a while, is that making art isn't always just complicated. Some, I mean, sometimes it can be. Sometimes it's not. It's not the easiest thing if you run into a problem. But um, art is, after a while, things like this just become soothing. So, I mean. People that make beadwork can testify to, to stuff like that. I, I'm not the the best person for beadwork or anything like that, but people that beadwork say that it's it's soothing to them, um, and it's relaxing to them, and it's just something about it that it makes at least me feel good. So I I love doing stuff like this. I like making pine needle baskets and everything like that I enjoy these kinds of things so we're getting ready to get start on the next line I put all of them in order and we're gonna put them down and start Pull everything tight Keep going. You can do multiples at a time if you can. If you can do that. So 
how to just you want to do multiples at a time just go underneath the next push that one down just a smidge so you can get the needle through and then just pull it to tighten everything up <clears throat> So we'll start on the next line and we're going to work our way back Well, we're going to work our way across so we're going to put one more up here at the top and then we're going to work our way back down to close the circle. down come back under one, two, two. when I first started it was definitely tricky to to get it to go through two but as you go along it'll get easier and easier but if you just want to do one at a time of course it's it's always fine and sometimes I have to do one just because it may not allow me to. And you never want to completely fight with with anything like this that you do because you don't want to put any negative feelings or anything like that into it. So you don't want to be fighting with, with something that you make out of love, if you will. So anytime that you feel like you're getting completely and utterly frustrated with something, um, as far as crafting, as far as anything like that, I definitely advise just just leave it be and come back to it after a while because um, clarity can often come with time yeah um, and of course that clear way of thinking can also come with time if you're frustrated you're not exactly thinking the, the clearest and this will get a lot of people in trouble but <laughs> um, it's always good when, when working on something to just Leave it be if you're just not feeling like it. Typically, when I'm when I'm working, I, I never make anything if, if I'm not really feeling good or if I'm in a, if I'm not exactly up to sh up to shape. So if I'm not 100% or anything like that, I normally won't make anything. You always got to watch out for your pattern. And this belt here is actually going to be mostly white. Reason being, a lot, of, a lot of times where I've seen the belts down in the south were um, the belts of the south. In most cases, I'm actually going to change this. 
Uh, the belts in the South, in most cases, were actually um, white majority, just because of the kind of wampum that, um, uh, at least I guess the, the type of wampum and everything like that was being used. You find a lot of times there's, uh, they talk about heavy, like white belts, like white heavy belts. Um, in the making of them, of course, we still have the purple and using purple a lot. And some, and in some cases, depending on the belt or depending on what you wanted to be conveyed within the belt, um, purple was used. But of course, that may take a little bit more time. I know some of the some of the best places to get wampum is actually in the Northeast. At least is, that's what they tell me, anyways. <laughs> uh, that's what they proclaim. Um, but in the southeast, it had a lot of different shells that weren't here in the northeast. And um, oh, the wampum that you find is just a smidge different than what it would be here. Even nowadays, I mean, it might have to do with pollution as well nowadays and things like that and other environmental issues as come about within the past 400 years um, but you don't really find too many big quahog shells or at least I've never seen too many like big quahog shells um, on on beaches or anything like that uh, in in some of the in the um, in the sounds or anything like that but others may have So it may just be, just depending on where you go, where you look, and things like that. So maybe they are there, but it may be um, a rare commodity, if you will. But just continuing the, in the, the pattern, you don't have, of course, not doing the same pattern as me. So just keeping up with the pattern that you may have laid out or drawn. Um, and going from there. So we're actually going to do one more. And then I'm going to let y'all continue on your own. Just remember, you can use this a box like this as, as far as economically goes. So using a box like this, cutting all the, all the spacings, um, marking out for each bead, whatever, depending on how you want to do it, right? Um, and you can, do, you can use both. So you can use long and, and the width. And you can use length and width, excuse me. Um, as far as doing this, you can have cuts here and cuts here, so you can make cuffs going this way and belts going this way, um, just depending on what you want to do. But always remember your pattern, remember your lacing, remember your sinew, um, remember to, not to let it get too short or it won't reach all the way and then you're kind of in a bind. Uh, <laughs> but just keep on practicing at it and make something beautiful.